Hello there. Welcome to Tea Time with Jeremy. Um, just drinking some kidney tea. I just got this when I was doing the Master Fast systems and thankfully I held on to it. So I've been drinking it most evenings and I'm back for another vlog. I'm back to talk about my journeys and how intense it's been. Holy crap. Um, I'm, I'm very happy and excited to see people engaging in my last video, so thank you. I believe that was day 26. Now I'm on day around 45. Not really counting too, too strictly because to me, this is not a program. It is the rest of my life. <laughs> so I hope this can give the people watching and also myself when I go back and watch these a, a bit of a timestamp, if you will. But I'm here and since my last video, geez, it's been pretty dark. It's been pretty, pretty dark, pretty debilitating, very challenging. And I've been suffering a lot. Um, the emotional <laughs> releases coming up are, are deep and and to me what I'd like to discuss on this a little bit is, is the path, the spiritual path of awakening and dissolving of the ego and how that relates to to what we're putting in our bodies and, and what we're eating, at least that's to me what's what seems to be, be coming up because it feels like it's more than just a parasite, it's more than just heavy metals, some of these energies I've been experiencing are just like super intense it's it feels like it's unearthly the stuff that's coming up so i where do i start so about maybe almost two weeks ago now 15 days ago we did a a liver and gallbladder flush and we followed a common protocol that we see online where you pretty much do a fast from noon on and then you drink Epsom salts, 6 p.m. Epsom salts, 8 p.m. Epsom salts, 10 p.m. olive oil and lime juice, lay down, wake up, 6 a.m. Epsom salts, 8 a.m. Epsom salts. And then from then, you're, from there on, you're supposed to release all the, the gallstones, all the, the stones stuck in your gallbladder and your liver. So that was very difficult, and it was a wake-up call because I realized I gotta be very careful of what I put in my body and I was super sensitive to the Epsom salts and it was very challenging. The day before that, I, I went on a visa run so I flew to, to Singapore for the day and it was very challenging for me. Singapore is very strict when it comes to substances and so when you land there it says drug trafficking results in death so I didn't bring any CBD oil Home or THC, nothing. I was just riding with me, with my breath, and it was tough, especially since a lot of emotional stuff came up, and I packed my dried fruit and cucumbers and mango and bananas, you know, all this raw, fresh fruit, and I was just craving everything I couldn't eat, so I was really tired coming back from that trip because I left in the morning, came back in the evening, long day of travel. I just needed to leave the country to get my new visa, which I was successful in, but that was difficult. And then the day after that, and again, I'm just <sighs> reminding myself how sensitive I am, how sensitive this body is, because again, it's more than just my physical. To me, it's the fact that I'm an empath and I've been an empath my whole life. Energetically, I can pick up things and so the day after that, we decided to do the, the gallbladder liver, liver flush. And I was so tired from traveling that I didn't wake up until like 11.30. And we're supposed to start fasting at noon. So I rushed downstairs and I eat a mango and drink some juice. And so I was pretty much fasting going into this liver gallbladder flush. Looking back, it makes sense why I reacted the way I did. But geez, it was, it was super, super tough. So... I was tired all day. It was so hard for me to get the Epsom salts down. And 
I was naive. I was expecting it to taste like sea salt. No, it was not like that at all. So the first two, I was able to get it down, but it was not easy. And then at night when we had the, the olive oil and the lime, my, my fiance, June, that was hard for her. She didn't want to get it down. Um, but we learned a little trick. If you drink it with a straw, you can combine it. But I loved it. I was drinking the olive oil, it was amazing. But then I had this, this big jar, so when it got to the bottom, it was just lime juice. And so the lesson for me is next time use a straw because it was like oil, 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 and then super sour. So anyways, I felt pretty good after that. But then the next morning, 6 a.m. came around, I could barely drink the Epsom salts. My whole body was reacting like, oh, we, we can't take this anymore. So I, I was able to, to drink them. 6 a.m. by 8 a.m., it, it took me like a good five, seven minutes to get it all down. I took a little bit. Um, my body wanted to throw up right away, and I'm feeling super sick and weak as it is. And I'm just like, no, I gotta keep going. So I'm like jumping up and down, doing deep breathing just to keep it in my body. It brought me back to, to some ayahuasca ceremonies where it, traditionally in Brazil, they, you have three cups and, I, and it's like, you just gotta drink it even though my body's sick or I feel like I'm gonna throw up or it's just too much. And it, it brought me back to those memories. And so I got down the, the fourth Epsom salt cup and then when you're supposed to start pooping right away and, and my fiance June was, was going to the bathroom or eliminating as Arnold Eric calls it, I, I couldn't go. I didn't have my first elimination until like 11 a.m. and I was just sick the whole day and looking back I realized how Epsom salts um, cause spasms in the liver or it's, it's just tough on the body, it's tough on the liver and I feel like it wasn't a good idea for me to do that, especially at that time. So at the same time, I, I, I feel like from my experience with supplements or herbs or even medicines and drugs, plant medicines, when the reaction is that strong, often it's because the body actually needs it or it needs the healing of that. It's just too intense to handle that load. So. So that night I talked to a naturopath and she was telling me that, yeah, you probably got to do that again if that's, that's how you reacted. So we're going to do more liver gallbladder flushes, but we're definitely not going to use that much Epsom salts, if any. So lesson learned. And then I did, I was eliminating gallstones for the next 48 hours. I did an enema the next day. I got tons of them out. Uh, I took a picture. If you want, I can send you the picture. There's tons. So good experience. I felt like I tripped and <laughs> face planted into <laughs> hell for a bit, but overall by, by Tuesday, we did this Saturday night to Sunday, and by Tuesday I was feeling much better. But then since then I've been dealing with such deep fatigue and, and it's just been a, a roller coaster basically of just me not being able to get out of bed and me crying a lot, you know, this morning. I let myself sleep. I was like, right, I'm just gonna love myself and experiment here. So I slept in 11, let myself sleep 12, 1, 1 30. Finally, my fiance comes in. She's like, hey, you know, you gonna get out of bed today? And then as soon as she left, I just woke up and realized how sad I was and just started crying. And basically from 2 to 4 p.m., I was just crying off and on. And it felt like for no reason. It wasn't like, oh, my dog died. It was just like, it felt like this, this ego death. It felt like I just had no certainty in this world. Like I can't trust anything. I can't trust in myself. You know, things were popping up like some, some high school trauma of this, this girl who I, I asked her to go to prom and she said no. And then my friend asked her and she said yes. And so there was a little bit of emotional stuff in the past coming, but it was mostly just like, I didn't feel safe. Like I feel like the ground in which I'm standing on is crumbling. It was just like, it, and that's why I mentioned earlier, it feels more like this spiritual awakening because there's, there's no logic to it. It's not like, ah, oh, my ex-girlfriend got together with someone or you know, this client didn't end up signing with me for my coaching, so I'm missing out on the money. It's, it's deeper than that. Um, one thing that, kept come, that did come up is just realizing how, how sad I was and how miserable I felt. And, and this, this story was coming in of me not wanting to tell my family how much I'm suffering and, and me 
not wanting to go home this spring to be around my family because it's just so much. It's almost like this black hole inside of me that's just digging at my core and I'm face planting into hell over and over and over again and just meeting the devil and wait. It's just like all these horrible things. Words don't even come close. It's tough. It's tough. And I have no idea where it's coming from, why it's there, but it feels like it's like this ego is just dissolving and I feel like I don't know what to do. There's nothing I can do. It doesn't feel like it's like, a, oh, I, I had too much cooked foods or I, I cheated I had too many nuts or too much dried fruit it's it feels like it's beyond the physical so I was I was suffering like that yesterday as well and earlier this week and I noticed my pattern is I gotta I gotta seek for something to change I gotta read a new book I gotta learn about parasites and cleansing I gotta detox faster and what came up for me is that I seeking outside does not bring relief to this type of pain what does bring relief is just surrender what does that look like just getting on laying down and plugging in guided meditation after guided meditation and doing that for 90 minutes straight two hours straight falling asleep waking up all right i'm still here like the sleep to me it, it's like an escape because it's peaceful it's restful even though some of my dreams are really messed up and i'm waking up to go poop in the middle of the night because i'm taking all these herbs but it's just presence, absolute presence. I feel like if I if I slip for a moment and not am not present of my breath or of my mind and what I'm thoughts I'm creating or the prayer that I'm living into in that moment, then it's just suffering and the mind comes up with all these things I gotta do and mind's racing and deeper the anxiety into the anxiety I go. So it's 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 deep. It feels like it's surrender or suffer. And the good news is I do find that if I really let myself melt into the pain and feel it and just go in and let myself cry and meditate and rest, I do find those moments of peace, of inner stillness. There is this serenity that's at the bottom, that's holding all this pain, all this sorrow, all this anguish and despair. But it feels very difficult to access that. And it feels way stronger than any tools I've done, any enemas or breath work or anything like that. It's like the creator is just like, you need to surrender and just let yourself die and be in the fire and trust that anything that is not truly you is going to burn. That's how it feels. It feels like I'm just in this kiln and it's burning off everything. And the only thing that's going to remain is, is things that I, I can't access, I can't even think about because it's just me and who I am. So, so it's deep. So that being said, parasites is one thing that I've been researching and, and learning about and found myself overwhelmed with ideas and different strategies on how to kill them. But I did end up seeing a, a naturopath last week and she confirmed that adrenals are weak, liver... Um, kidneys, mostly that, and parasites, heavy metals. So um, I got some new herbs coming in the mail, and I'm still sticking with the Dr. Mars protocol, mostly raw fruit and vegetables. Um, oh, one, one new thing, I've introduced fats recently, so that was interesting, but also brought back a lot of my negative eating patterns, if you will. I found uh, having a little bit of cashew butter and we've been making these amazing cashew dressings but then the cravings come back and then I start to overeat and then I remember all these times in my life where because I was so empathic I, I didn't feel comfortable around all the energy so I would just eat and eat and eat and to me salt and fat brings me to that and that's where I feel like I have a lot of work to, to do because the, the mono fruit meals it's almost like bypassing in a way because I can eat half a watermelon and feel good and, and feel like I don't need to eat anymore. But as soon as I have that one bite of fat or salt, it just, then it kicks in and then it's like more food and more, more of this, more of that. And then I want to snack and keep going. So to me, that is a sign that there's work to do where, yeah, of course I'd like to get to, you know, fruitarian and, and that raw lifestyle. Don't need that much fat. 
but I feel like I haven't yet cultivated the skills and the skillfulness and the mindfulness and the self-discipline to say, all right, I'm just going to have one bowl of salad in this. Otherwise, I, I have fruit all day, and it's like really easy to stop eating. And then as soon as I have that first bite of bat, it's like, ah, I need more. And, and that's one thing I didn't really appreciate about the, the master fast and the Gerson therapy diet, where there's just like no fat. And even in the master fast community, they're like against fat and people telling you avocados are going to make you sick and these things. So I'm transitioning slowly, transitioning slowly. And, and patience has been a big, just a big theme and a reminder for me. So... So yeah, let me see if there's anything else I would like to, to share because I feel super tired. Even though I slept till two today, I still feel drained. The last video I made, I was high on life, you know, not actually on any substances. I've still been relaxing on the medication. Of course, in these moments of desperation, I, I go there, ah, oh, what if I smoke tobacco or drink coffee or take weed or take ayahuasca, you know, peyote, mushrooms, all these things that could take me somewhere else. I, I don't see them as the solution. And it seems like those things will probably take me deeper into <laughs> the pain because I can't hide it. I can't hide from it. Um, so yeah, I haven't been able to exercise much, which, which is a bummer. I haven't had very much energy at all. I would, oh, good thing, because we, you know, we gotta highlight the, the progress, right, especially you're on a journey like myself and it's just painful a couple good things have been happening one is I would say the lows aren't as low the reason I, I committed to a raw diet in the first place is because I was waking up suicidal every day and I decided I needed to see a psychiatrist and take some medications because it's not all right that was the same day Kobe Bryant died I remember it specifically and since then the, the lows are not as lower so this is not very <laughs> motivational and uplifting to hear, but at least it's not as bad. It's just like the hell, maybe it's only one L, <laughs> not two. <laughs> There's less demons, um, but I will share that it's not as low. Two, I'm able to fall asleep much better. So before I was like getting super, you know, heavy and panic attacks or anxiety, fatigue, headaches in the morning, and then at nighttime, can't sleep, so I'm like, what do I do with this energy? I'll read, meditate, and I just kind of sit there and like connect with spirit and just give thanks because I'm not in pain. But I would stay up till one, two in the morning, which would bleed into the next day. So recently I've been able to fall asleep much easier. So that's great. And in the last video, someone commented, I said Syrian root, but I meant Valerian root. And I was taking that to help me fall asleep and it was making me groggy, so I stopped since then. I'm not taking anything and I'm able to fall asleep, but I'm still waking up groggy or I'm not able to wake up. It's still heavy. Um, so I guess that's, that's progress because I feel like I'm healing a lifetime of, of poor eating. Um, another thing that's very interesting is when I was doing the liver gallbladder flush, all these memories from when I mistreated my body were coming up. So when I was in college, when I would get hammered on a Saturday morning and then smoke weed and then eat a ton of Chinese food, when I would overeat and then get high and overeat again, or when I would go to the bars and get hammered and do horrible things to my liver and then eat tacos and all these unhealthy things at three in the morning. And so to me, it was crazy that it felt like I was healing these, these parts of me physically and then the emotional memories were coming up like there was a vivid memory of, of a specific song of playlist that I used to party to that I used to drink to that I used to play around these times so I found that very interesting but also inspiring and helped me stay on the path of like all right this makes sense like I'm, I'm getting rid of these things that have been stuck inside of me and it was these memories of like I put them there and as they come out, it carries these energies of cellular memory or it has music and, you know, all the senses combined with it, you know, all the energy tied to it whenever I, I, I put it there. And so as it's coming out, those energies are being released and I'm noticing and feeling them. So it's a bit interesting, but I, I like that. 
because to me it makes sense and it gives me more faith um, and it, it's not even that scary it's more validating of like oh this is why my liver's not functioning properly this is why my kidneys aren't filtering like they should this is why I, it's not like it just happened to me I did these things to myself so there's also this uh, this grieving and this like deep deep gratitude for my body but also this like I'm sorry I'm so sorry to all my glands and my whole body and, and so that's something that I found to be very unique and I'm not sure anybody else has, has dealt with that but I thought it was cool I was like, ah, I'm like being shown energetically why <laughs> I'm experiencing these things. At the same time, that's what I talked about earlier. It's like the, the spiritual aspect seems to be its own its own thing. Because it's like, I understand what I did in this lifetime to be dealing with this. But on a day like today, it feels like it's, it's beyond food. It's beyond matter. It's beyond physical. It's just like, it's coming out. And it's, it's like, I'm, I'm just releasing these things that seem like they're not grounded in any memory or logical paradigm so that's why it's, it's even scarier it's just like deep anxiety for no reason like everything is falling apart i don't know what's going on lack of trust in everything so that's that's very scary very very scary um so yeah another thing i've been working on is, is connecting with the parasites inside and and expressing love for them and realizing that for a while I made them the enemy I gotta get rid of these parasites but I realized they're inside of me it's a part of me and that's a, a microcosm of the whole where even if they're not inside of me it's still part of the universe it's here and so to me coming back to to love and acceptance and not this desperation oh, I gotta get rid of you and F you why are you in my body you know die 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 and coming back to love of, hmm all right, you're here, but, but let's let's work to do this together because I don't want you to be taking all my nutrients and, and making me feel bad. So coming back to, to love and that, that heart space of compassion, even when it comes to things that may be detrimental or, or not good for for the body, for the health. And in a way, I feel like that's a, a symbol for you know, looking at what people are doing to the ocean or things on the outside that seem bad, but if we come with aggression or anger, it's not necessarily gonna be helpful. So, doing my, my best just to, to work with myself and, and love my parasites and you know, work out a deal with them, all right, a little bit more. Um, and then another thing about parasites that the naturopath explained to me is that over a full moon period, mm -hmm. they often mate and lay eggs. So, it's been a full moon, and my symptoms phew, skyrocketed. So that makes sense. And even though it sucks, because I've been super tired for the last four days, at least it's in alignment with the theory, with the philosophy. Because for me, the deepest, darkest pain and fear I go through is that I'm just gonna suffer for no reason and no one's gonna ever figure it out and I'm just gonna suffer for eternity. And so when there's some evidence of why things are happening or if it's in alignment with the moon cycles, then at, at least I'm like, all right, understand it a little bit more so we can work with it so all right that's where i will leave this vlog thank you for, for tuning in um it really helps me to share it helps me to communicate like this so i'm really grateful for you guys for watching if you have any questions let me know and if you want to support me honestly encouragement is the one thing I feel I need right now. I've got plenty of videos and books, content to read. I'm reading Dr. Jensen's book on on the bowel. I'm reading another one um, on fasting, you know, the fine science and art of fasting by uh, Shelton something. And then I've also got uh, Prometheus List Diet, Healing System, on audiobook annotated by Professor Spira. So I'm working through that and I'm also reading, listening to The Grape Cure. So I'm, if anything, I need to take a break from content. Um, but if you have words of inspiration, encouragement, I will receive that because to me, that's what I need, faith, just faith in myself, faith in my path, faith in this, because I feel like in a weird way, I am venturing where not that many people have gone before. 
and a lot of that is on the inside and so nobody can tell and I'll be like what's going on why can't a psychotherapist or someone tell me why this is happening and it's just forcing me into deeper and deeper surrender and faith in this path so within all that thank you for watching please subscribe stay in touch leave a comment and I will be back for more videos whenever it flows. All right, peace, love, breath, and healthy lifestyle.